What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today's Thursday, May 9th, 2024, and the market has closed not too long ago. There's some things in price action that I wanna point out that happened today, as well as just point out some trades that were great opportunities. Some of these are trades in which I took, but for the most part, I just want you guys to understand the logic or the thought process behind what one trader might be thinking when we're looking at price action, and hopefully this helps. So this is just a screenshot from yesterday here. So I have that on a full screen, but you guys can see this is, let me see here. This was from yesterday. So let me just click this right here. And before the market closed, I was just pointing out some things that were forming or some technical patterns that were forming on our chart. Not that technical analysis or patterns are the only thing you should be looking at when you're trying to make a trading decision, but sometimes it's hard to ignore when you see this type of compression happening. It's pretty much a sign that you know there's going to be some sort of directional move coming up because price will not stay flat at a particular level, especially in this volatile market for an extended period of time. In other words, we had a couple days of consolidation and the expectation coming into a day like today would have been some sort of a move up or down. So before starting the day, so let's just take a look at this is the SPY here on the daily. We can see a little bit of compression that was happening in price action right here. And again, at the start of the day, don't really have a bias in terms of direction. Although most technical analysis traders will know this is a momentum breakout. It's a continuation pattern because we can see momentum is to the upside. And then we have a little bit of consolidation and then we have a breakout with continuation. Now, again, you don't wanna make your trading decisions based on one thing. Most of the time, you don't even need to draw the lines on your chart. You can just look at it and see when trends are forming. In other words, like this right here, you can just look at that and see that there's a trend down at that level here. So on this grid, we have the SPY, we have the SPX and we have the ES. So we'll start with the beginning of the day. And let me just point out something here. If we come to the option spreads, I just want to point out the start of the day here again. So the logic at the start of the day is this ES strangle. So this is before the market opens. There was a catalyst. Again, we know every week in advance when these catalysts are on the calendar. So it's not something you need to try to predict or, you know, try to prophesize or anything. You just know at, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, there's going to be a report that's coming out. If it's red, if you're using Forex Factory or if you're using any other type of platform or program that shows you the economic calendar for the week, you know to be prepared for these. These things. So at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, we know there's going to be some sort of a catalyst. On top of that, we know price has been consolidating as we pointed out from the day before. So that means there is an opportunity coming up. As a trader or any type of entrepreneur, your objective is to take advantage of the opportunities in front of you and utilize as least amount of risk as possible. In this case here, the trade I decided to take is a strangle, similar to the video which I just previously uploaded a few days ago talking about an ES strangle. It's great because you can enter this trade from pre-market. So in this case here, the strike price was 5225 and 51.80. So this is a call and a put. I'm just choosing my strike prices because I like to buy options around $2.50 or $2 if it's the ES. And if it's the SPY, I like to keep them around a dollar for whenever I'm trading these types of strangles. And the opportunity is right here. So we can see this pattern in a sense forming again from the day before we're aware of this. So the, the point of why I just wanted to share the screenshot is letting you guys know again from the day prior, there's already some sort of anticipation of this move. Here's the NASDAQ, here's the SPX. Didn't have to draw it on the SPY as it's the same as the SPY and the SPX. I was using this to point out something as an opportunity that was coming up potentially on Tesla. So I was just showing different patterns to be aware of as potential opportunities on the horizon for today. There was still some room to go for the SPY up to 520, as well as the SPX still had room for 510, 515, which is about the equivalent of the SPY at 520, or even more conservative 5200, which is what we see right here. So that's the point of just showing the screenshot from the day before. It's just to point out the awareness and that's something as a trader you want to try to do how can you spot potential opportunities before they come we're not trying to predict what's going to happen we're just looking for opportunities where the risk is low a strangle a few minutes before a report comes out is in a sense where the risk will be the lowest. In this case here, we have consolidation, we have compression, we have a pattern, and we have a catalyst, which means price is likely to make some sort of a move. And that's what makes the strangle a low risk opportunity. And that's why I shared it also in the previous video before the FOMC announcement last week. Now, as the market progresses, I decided to open up a put credit spread right here. And I'm sharing this just as another example. You can buy a call, you can sell a put, you can run a bull debit spread, you can run an out the money call butterfly, you can pick your poison. Everyone has their own style of trading. 
In this case here, I decided to run a put credit spread because I didn't want to babysit the position. Now, why would a trader want to enter a put credit spread? Let's pop up in this chart right here. This is our SPX and I'm going to remove everything off the chart, right? So we can keep it nice and clean and disregard the quant trading app scripts. So I'm not using any studies or any scripts. First and foremost, price action is king. Price action, price action, price action. And you generally would like to look for some sort of confirmation with volume if you're a momentum trader. In this case here, we have a key level. This was our high for the week right here and we can see there was a rejection. Price came back up to this level and we broke out. Coincidentally, that number is 5,200. 5,200 is a very important number for the SPX. If you understand gamma exposure, if you understand trading psychological support and resistance levels, any way in which you want to slice it, there's confluences to be aware of the 5200. Once price broke out of 5200, the expectation will be that 5200 should hold. If price comes back down to it, it should hold and price should bounce off of it. If price breaks below 5200 and then does not reclaim it and then it continues to the downside, now we will have some sort of confirmed backside weakness and that can be a reason to change your sentiments or change your bias. But in this case here, we had a breakout that happened. So momentum right here, this is 10 a.m. Eastern time. So 30 minutes after the market opens, we have momentum breakout. Price likes to retrace. Where does price like to retrace to? Previous resistance, is likely to become future support. So this was our previous resistance, and this is it becoming our potential future support. Now again, at the time, we don't know if it's going to be support. We're taking a trade that's long at this level because this is where the risk is low to be long. In other words, if this support did not hold, if 5200 broke and the SPX continued to go down, the risk would be smaller relative to what we stand to gain if the market was to go up to this key strike such as 5215. I'm going to zoom in again and try to slow it down for a second here. And let's actually draw a uh, level on our chart so we can see it a little bit more permanently. I'm not going to make it exactly 5200. 5200 here. The logic, it breaks. We have confirmation. We can see that in price action. Let's take a look at the SPY. I'm also going to hide any of these um, levels as I want to avoid talking too much about Quant Trading App. There were all sorts of other confirmations within QTA. Just for example, I'm going to leave this up here so you guys can see this is our weekly resistance level. We can see how it was interacting for the past couple of days, but then we get a breakout over this level and it's a clean, strong breakout with some confirmation from volume. We can see acceleration in price. We can see how fast price is moving up. And then we can also see VWAP right here rising. So let's actually just turn off the weekly script because I do want to keep at least just the intraday one so we can keep our VWAP and our two-day anchored VWAP here. And as we zoom in, we can see VWAP is holding as price is breaking out. And what happens when it hits a resistance level? In this case here, again, let's ignore. I'm actually going to turn off the Q2A levels because this video is going uh, public on YouTube and let's just turn off the shaded areas because not everyone will have those uh, levels available to them. So I want to keep it as clean and just pay attention to free studies or things that you can find for yourself. VWAP is available for anyone. Today Anchor VWAP is pretty much available on any platform these days. These additional levels are just coming straight from gamma exposure, which is something you can also look up for yourself. If you don't know what gamma exposure is, you can also just take a look at high open interest levels. 520 is a high open interest level for the SPY. 515 is a high open interest level for the SPY. In this case here, it is our absolute gamma strike and it is our highest positive gamma strike for tomorrow's expiration that was calculated from pre-market. So that's what those levels on our chart are showing. But again, it's just a clean psychological level and it's also a clean psychological level here. So everyone is in a sense aware of these two levels. Now, as the SPY breaks out, what do we have right here? We have VWAP. Whenever we have a clean breakout, VWAP is likely to hold in this case here. Let's also draw our previous resistance level here. I'm gonna use the very tip top here. And in this case here, let's put a nice shaded area to make it a little bit cleaner. So I'm just going to come from, you know, all of these levels here and just draw a kind of a range around it so we have an area. So we can see a little bit of rejection here. That's all of our rejection here. So supply and demand traders, price breaks out of it. So what does it do? It comes back and it retests it. We have VWAP as confirmations right here. So VWAP holding on the retest of this area, this becomes another opportunity to potentially get long as this coincides with our SPX. This is the SPX here. We can do the same thing. We can draw a nice range around right here. And we have it here and we have it right here. 
it is the week's high. This is the week's high. We can see it on our daily time frame right here. That is the high of this red day. We can see it down here on the ES. It's essentially the same thing. They're all derivatives of the S&P 500. So I have the futures up also. Let's also turn off the study here for the Quant Trading App weekly script. So everyone's chart can pretty much look like this. Today Anchor View App again is pretty much available for anyone. We can see this support level holding early in the day. Here's our anchored VWAP. Here's our intraday VWAP. Price breaks out. What does it retest to? It comes back to this area here. So this is our previous supply zone, which is now a potential demand zone at this point. And then we can see demand holds, price breaks out. So another clear opportunity. There's an opportunity pre-market or as the market opens, then there is another clear opportunity right here. The trade is a break and retest of a key area with confirmation, with VWAP, with confluence from gamma exposure, these confluences stacking becomes a smart trade that you can put into your journal. Now, let me just scroll right along here. So that's why I decided to short the 5200 put because I'm expecting the SPX to remain above 5200 once it broke 5200. The logic is it's going to stay above this level. So I sold the 5200 put. My stop loss is if the SPX breaks below VWAP. I meant to say the SPY. So if the SPY was to break down below VWAP, I will stop out of that SPX position. So you see how you can use the SPY and the SPX interchangeably. You can do your analysis on either one. I always have them both up as it is important to pick up certain nuances that one might provide that the other one might not provide. In this case here, VWAP on the SPY was the additional confluence that I was expecting to hold. So at that time, I didn't wait for price to come down here to sell the put credit spread as I wasn't looking to time the trade perfectly. It was almost a no brainer. I wanted to be as stress free or carefree about the position. The logic was we broke out. If price retraces, we're probably going to hold. Momentum will carry price up to the upside. We had not touched 520 yet for the week. The expectation was all week we were going to 520. I'm avoiding talking about my biases throughout the whole week here because this video would be entirely too long. But it was discussed a little bit earlier about 5200 on the SPX. I'm leaving out a monster trade in which I had here. There were a couple of really uh, big wins that came from a swing from a couple days earlier into the week here. So already was targeting these again, trying to avoid discussing every single trade as I'm just trying to highlight the logic. I do want to switch now to so you guys can see these are our gamma exposure levels from the start of the week. So at the start of every week, I like to start out by plotting out uh, these gamma levels. So let's turn this off here. So we know 517 also a key strike. What do we have? We have this compression happening right at this key strike for the week. Price is also very likely going to break. It's not going to stay at this level for the next 48 hours as it has already hovered around it for 48 hours. That's two full days. It's not going to go another two full days without some sort of volatile or breakout type of move. Naturally, the expectation would be that we go towards 520 as that's the direction momentum is carrying price action as we can see that momentum started from here on this day here last week this is when i did that video on that es strangle expecting a volatile move in either direction we got a really nice move and that trade ended up being a monster trade you can check out again my previous video link will be in the description below now let's just fast forward to what are the opportunities that we have. We have a new trend that's forming here, as well as if we just take a look at intraday here, we can see a trend forming. We can see a new pattern forming an ascending triangle. This is just basic technical analysis one-on-one, -on -one, but the context is pretty important. It's not just about the technical patterns. It's not just about gamma exposure. It's not just about a breakout. It's about being able to piece it all together and understanding what's happening, as well as taking notes of who is in control of the market right now. Now let's try to see if we can spot another opportunity on this chart here as later in the day, we ended up getting another opportunity right here. There was a trader, I believe that asked if I was, what I was going to do about a certain position. I had a couple diagonals. So this was my risk profile at the time and I was leaving it alone at this time being, I think a trader asked me if I was going to close out this position that I have for next week as it, it was in a little bit of trouble. And I was just kind of addressing that there wasn't really a need for me to act at that time as this trade was just this one butterfly was eclipsing the losses that I was under for these diagonals for next week. This was a bigger position, but using a smaller position, I was able to protect the drawdown from 
the other one. But then as we continue along, we're just pointing out certain things here. I just want to show this is other things to be aware of. We have the 5210. So this is, again, I'm trying to avoid talking too much about what's available to QTA members as we also had additional confluences of this right here straight from the SPY zero DTE option volume chart. Sorry, I just clicked away so it ended up refreshing. So I can't pull it up now as the market is closed. It's not going to have the uh, exact same levels. But if we just pull this up here again, 519 was the previous day's volume range. Again, this, this is a totally different topic to cover, but just know there was additional conf confluences at the 519 level. So that's this level right here on the breakout, just extra reasons. A large portion of what I like to do is look around to see if there's extra reasons to take a trade. It takes less than a minute to just glance around at all the confluences that we have available to us these days as retail traders, whether you're using something like Quant Trading App or using any other alternative service or using your own discretion, your own, your own technical analysis or you're pulling information from the options chain any which way in which you go about it you want to make sure you have a clear and concise system for yourself but being able to use price action and just understanding logically what's likely to happen or a little bit of common sense what's likely to happen can go a long way and a huge plan for the direction in which i'm planning on taking a lot of the videos i'm going to be releasing this year is going to be about reducing some of the excessive amount of information that's available to us and the com and the information overload i would say so if we come here we just take a think about it again the basics are support and resistance supply and demand trend lines and we can see this trend is forming here so let's disregard the fact that we already have this extra confluence at 519 it is a key strike let's take a look at what we can expect at this level price breaks out it puts in a new high of day and it retraces this retracement right here is about a 50 percent retracement I can draw out the fibs, but again, these are things that you can just eyeball. You don't even really need to draw it on your chart, but here we go. We have a 50% retracement. So price breaks out, it retraces. This is something that after a while, you can just look at your chart and see. I did not need to draw that Fibonacci on the chart the same way I didn't need to draw this level on the chart in the same way I didn't need to draw this zone on the chart. Obviously, I'm doing it for the context of this video so you guys can see or understand what I'm thinking, but it should get to the point where you can just look at your chart and see that, oh, you know, this was this level here earlier in the week. Let's delete this and let's delete this. And we see like, oh, 5,200, sure, you can draw 5,200 5, on your chart if you'd like, but you should just be able to see this is the week's high. We broke out, we retraced back to the week high, buyers were aggressive, price went higher, we broke the day's high and price pulled back. Oh, this looks like it's about halfway back. It looks like it went up and it pulled back about half halfway. It doesn't matter if it's exactly 50% or not. The point is that it retraced. This retracement now, where did it retrace to? Well, where was our most recent zone on our chart? We can see that there was a decent amount of, this is where a lot of buyers were before. Price didn't entirely come back down into this zone, but we can see that they were aggressive enough as price didn't sit down here long enough. We can see that buyers were aggressive right here. By the way, these are 15 minute candles. It is my preferred time frame for intraday trading. I can stack all the other confluences on our charts. Again, 519 was a significant level. I can turn back on the studies here. So let me just show studies and what was i looking at this is the top of the zone here from the quant trading app script so extra confluence all the things that i would generally check are right there on the chart for me so let's just come back to these option spreads and right here so this is where i went long just saying almost perfect this was another trade in which i ran here so let me just pull this up right here so this was just the broken wing out the money call butterfly i pretty much didn't want too much risk to the downside and the expectation was 52 15 another strike in which we were aware of again from early in the week that strike is essentially on the spy which is where it was a key gamma strike to start the week is a myriad of tools again there's gamma exposure to kind of paint the picture for the same thing at the time we also had let me just make this uh, full screen this was the expected move from the open so the pullback right to the expected move from the open added additional confluence this is the equivalent of 519 on the spy it happens to be the expected move for the spx for the day so we broke out and we ended up retracing what do you know about resistance if resistance breaks it retraces it can act as support we can see that these are where the buyers were earlier in the day same information on the chart just displayed in multiple different ways all aligning to the same thing and almost none of this requires 
buyers doodling on the chart. It's just things that you can look at and see with a little bit of experience and time in the market. You end up building up conviction. You end up becoming a little bit more confident. You end up seeing the same patterns playing out time and time again. Our jobs as traders is to just mitigate our risk as best as possible, be able to spot these opportunities and then act on these opportunities when they're presented to us. Early in the week, once the SPY got above the highest positive gamma strike, my bias was essentially long for the week. It isn't until we break back below this high positive gamma strike will my conviction change to some sort of a short bias or until we get to extreme levels. The SPY was not at extreme levels yet. Now we can make the argument maybe as we're at 520, we might be at extreme levels, but we're actually not that extreme there isn't that much positive gex much higher at least when i did my uh, analysis at the start of the week so that's just something to take note of things can change but for the most part i think the great opportunities in a sense at least for the the style of trading that i like to do are pretty much are over with for the week this is the gamma exposure that i'm referring to so this is our 515 once we broke above 515 next target at least for me was 520 as we can see we're in a lot of positive gamma territory this is coming straight from the gamma exposure here. Same information in the Discord available to us right here. So we have that analysis right here. We have the week, there's a weekly SPY gamma, and then there is the weekly SPX gamma, all in a sense pointing to the same thing. So whatever tool you use, I wanted to do this video kind of freestyling it, just winging it, just showing how to compound multiple different ways of dissecting the market or multiple different ways of approaching your analysis for the market. And it's a lot of it is the basics. A lot of it is the things that you learn within your first year of trading being able to spot opportunities like technical patterns, understanding risk reward, understanding support and resistance, understanding when resistance breaks, how we re retest that resistance. If that res if the previous resistance ends up acting as future support, it becomes a level in which you can take a trade off of to be long with the stop loss below a sensible level. Then if we get a new breakout, if price retraces, where does it retrace to? Do you have extra confirmation or extra confluences that that level can hold? And then you're essentially just trading the trend. And that's what we're doing here. This is a higher level low that keeps coming in so every pullback we're getting a higher low that in a sense is a trend we're also getting higher highs that is the very definition of a trend now things are becoming very constricted and tighter here as a wedge so then who knows what we'll have tomorrow maybe we'll have some sort of breakout maybe the spx just ends up pinning right around here we don't know again the opportunities in my opinion are pretty much happened for the week or i'll say the clearer opportunities lastly i'll just um zoom out here and then show something else that i've been kind of sharing all week at least within the uh, discord right here just to be aware of we do have this channel over the past uh, few days that have been forming so this is just something also to be aware of multiple things again pointing to we're just riding these trends we're just riding these levels up guys if you enjoyed this more laxed video that is just showing all sorts of different things or different tools i would love to do more videos like this that are not heavy with explaining every single thing obviously i'm not explaining gamma exposure i'm not explaining absolute gamma after a while it does gets very tiring to have to explain in every single video every single time so i would like to start compounding some of the prior information which I've shared in previous videos and try to speed through videos as well as just hopping on the mic or recapping things that might have happened during the day. It will become much easier for me to put out videos a little bit more frequently if the substance material is not so heavy. And it might be something as simple as, oh, there was a few triangles forming here. There's a few bull flags forming here. What additional confluences do we have? Why did I take a trade or what another trader might have been thinking about? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, I'm almost done wrapping up some heavy coding materials. So expect to see more videos back on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.